Hello, Aqua here again. Welcome to part two of my Applied and Logistics ME Network tutorial setup type of thing. Now, last episode, we set up a basic network, controller, ME chest, terminal interface, and input from another chest or something in this case, and the chest with a build craft pipe and a gate on it. So we can get things into our system. So we could be feeding into a quarry, from a quarry into our system. And all them bits to get up there. I've got some bits in there that we're going to be using this episode. But that's not all we can do. We can... We can attach machines to our network. Now, if you look, I've, I've got a couple of, I've got three thermal expansion machines here. Ignis Extruder, Pulverizer, and Induction Smelter. This is going to be a basic ore processing system that if any ores came into this chest, we'd end up with ingots in there. Just do it all for us. Now, the way I'm going to do it, this, this is, I'm going to touch on thermal expansion a little bit for a sec. The way you can do this is, Induction Smelter needs sand in that slot and ores go straight into this slot and you get two ingots so it's like pulverizing it but you don't have to pulverize you just go straight to the ore you get two ingots and you get a chance of some metals of stuff called rich slag and rich slag can give you three ingots if you use rich slag in this slot so you could have another induction smelter on the line here that actually uses that rich slag and you could you could put a certain type of ore into the next one and that you get three ingots from all that and so you get three ingots from the one that went in there or you can just save your rich slag for when you need it. But I've done this before with um, an, an extra induction smelter on the side there. But at the minute, I'm just taking a basic one up. So how do we set this up with an ME network? Well, well first thing, we need ME cable. Now, I think I showed you how to make this last time. It's just quartz fiber, uses the quartz dust. And redstone gets us ME cables. We're going to use quite a few of these. And adding these to your system pumps the power up. So you can see there, we're up to 12 units one off there there and there and you've got the base running cost but there you go and then uh, just so you can see the comparable how much power my main network runs here my main network is pulling 133 units i've got nearly 100 ME, bits of me cable various other things my system runs down to the auto crafting machine down there it runs my grid tech stuff over here and i've got some other stuff downstairs that's all part of the same network there so it's quite extensive it's fully uh, my system's pretty much fully automated this is how you'd start off the little basic system so what we do is on our cables now what i'm going to do is i'm going to run the cables on the back of here because i want to have access to two sides of these machines i want to have access to the top and the back now my machines here i've just gone straight along the top because that's how i set them up you don't have to always set them up the same way you see I've been able to swap some of the ME cable for the actual import and export buses that these machines need. So you can just run everything in LAN. But just because the way I'm setting this up, I want to have things in two to have things in two sides. It's just a bit easy doing that way. But I could have easily gone straight across the top there. In fact, for this first part, I am going to go straight across the top. So what I'm going to do is go straight over there, but that's no good because they're connecting. What we need is First of all, let's get the this set up so it's actually making stuff. So cobblestone is going to go into this slot. I've actually I've got quite a bit of cobblestone already, so I'll take a bit out of there. Cobblestone goes into that slot. Let's feed this how we would normally. So that exits to the right. That imports from the right. Oops, should be blue. That's going to create sand and gravel. And we want the sand to go into here, so that exports to there. And we want the gravel to go somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the gravel is going to go into a import bus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to that colour. That's the colour that we want. But there'll be an issue with that because if we set that then it's going to pull out of there as well. So there's something else we have to do. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, let's look at the buses. You've seen the storage bus. That's one type of bus. That goes into chest. The other two types of bus are export and import. One of them, the export takes things out of your ME network. The other one, the import puts things in. They're both exactly the same, apart from the import has a sticky piston. So think of that as that's pulling things in, the stickiness. And your export pushes things out with just a normal piston. So this is how we get things in and out of our machines. So we don't need to get anything out of there. And this one, we need to get gravel out. So what we're going to do is we're going to get one bit of gravel. And I'm going to brick that there. And I'm going to place an import bus on there and to make sure it doesn't take sand out what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a bit of gravel there 
Uh, what that's, that's going to do is that's the back should be the top there we go that's pulling gravel out the top of there but it shouldn't be pulling sand out so let's take sand out just confirm that's uh, not correct either that should have been green there we go that should have been green so it's only filling that side there we go so that's that filling that up with sand I can't put anything in there unfortunately and any gravel that gets produced in that slot is going to get pulled into the system so you should see our gravel going up but no sand coming in so that's all working great and then what was that a bit of cable on the floor and then what we want is we'd want ours to come into this one so we want a export bus on there and in the export bus we put our different ores in there so then any ores that are within that will came in through this chest as soon as you get the network here they'd go if there was set in there they'd go straight into here and they'd get processed into ingots perfect the only thing we need now is to get them back in so import bus and for this one i'm going to put it on the side and we use a bit of a cable to connect it there we go and then just set this so that that side should all get dragged into there that pulled some sand through didn't it yep pull some sand from the way I had it set but that'll pull everything from this side into there you may have to set it in that I'd have to double check I've not done it with thermal expansion for a bit Um, they do interact with these a little bit funny because the way these are sided it's sometimes a bit simpler to connect them to machines that are not sided I may maybe may would have to set that to that but I think yeah in fact I would that's that's how you'd want that set that's good right that's how you want that set that grey square one um, that would pull things out of there and not off that side that's exactly what I wanted so there we go there's a little basic setup so now any ores that came into this chest will get auto processed and end up in here. Brilliant. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move a couple of these machines around. I'm going to wire it up a little bit different. I'm going to show you a bit more of an advanced build using the same machines and pretty much the same pipes but just a little bit more and it'll have level control in it. So back in a sec. So here we are back again and you can see things are a bit more spread out and I've got a couple of level emitters in the mix now. So what we've got is quite a different beast here it's still the same three machines it still does the same thing it still automatically process any ores that come into that chest what this also does is it maintains a stock of cobble and to an extent gravel but cobble and sand it'll maintain a stock of them in here because what it does is this will turn the machines off whenever there's enough cobble or sand in there and what classes enough is what we set in that so I've said whenever there's 64 cobble in the system there which there is there's 244 so whenever there's more than 64 in put a redstone signal onto this and of course this has got redstone control on it so that means this machine won't run while there's only 64 while there's more than 64 cobble in there same thing with this so what we've got instead of our cobble going straight into there our cobble goes out on the side there into the ME network and cobble for this pulverizer it doesn't no longer come straight from there it comes from the ME network so we've got sand sorry we've got cobble sitting in an export bus to go into the back of the machine there and we've got a similar thing with this but this one's set to sand again 64 so as soon as the sand drops under 64 this would turn off this is start processing some of that cobble it keeps taking it from the network as long as it needed it if it took enough so that that was under 64 and that the cobble it actually went under 64 this would turn back on and it start making more cobble so what you can do is you control I mean I've just set 64 but you could set it to whatever you want and then this one here we've got two separate sided inputs so we've got this export bus set to sand this one will be set with your ores and then this import bus is just set so that dot colour which will take anything from this side so there we go same thing bit more complicated oh, it does a does a job and there's still a third way of doing this and the third way would be to 
get a, your ME level emitters and instead of being on the top of the machine what you could do is you could put them there and there and what you could set them to do then is to run on the the actual actually doing this way might actually interfere with the machines because it's in the same block so you need to be careful what, what's getting affected but basically um, in fact no that'd be fine what we can do is what I want is a bit of sand and a bit of gravel so you still even you've got options doing things even within it so grab a bit of sand grab a bit of gravel now that one's going to be it's not gravel cobblestone I want 64 of that this one wants 64 of that now what we can do is we can set them off and we can put normal cable on and yep that's running what we need to do now is set this to um, active without signal there we go active without signal and that one same active about signal so we've got control on these on the buses as well so now what we've got is that'll make cobble and it'll fill up this this slot here and that'll make sand and it'll fill up this slot here but as long as as long as these level limiters are on it won't export, any, export anything so you're doing the same thing but you're just controlling it on the buses rather than on the machines yeah so Exactly the same thing, this bit hasn't changed at all. Just showing you some of the options you can do. And one other thing we could do, just um, to show. Now, I've never actually used one of these before, so I should have actually practiced a bit before um, making a tutorial, really. Just using a bit of kit I've never used before. What we can do is, I believe this should work, is put a lever on there. And if we swap that one. For this thing here called dark cable so what we can do if we put our lever on we can make it so that this is either connected to the system or not so you can actually with this stuff called dark cable you see where it lights up when it's turned on so you can have it so that you can have things working as part of your system or you can just isolate big parts of your system when you don't want them to work so for example if you wanted to save some ores up for some reason without this auto system working you could just flick that off for a bit and then it's this would just cut this bit off wonderful very nice so that's a little bit of basic processing and a little bit of level con level control on your resources that are in your me network so so it's very very configurable quite easy to set up it's got to play around with it a little bit and then the only thing that we need to really check is ME auto crafting. Now there's a couple of things we need for this. We've got the basic bits in here. No, no, there's, there's two more things we need to check. One of them is working with ME interface. That also requires auto crafting, so we have to do that first. So what I've done here is I've got all the bits we need to make the simplest ME auto crafting interface. And this just has to be touching the network somewhere. So what we can do with it is it can go here yeah. and what I'm going to make is a 3x3 a three three cube crouching onto my uh, space here well, that's no worries, we'll sort that out later so this is the smallest one you can make basically I made a little cube there, my main one over here is 4x4 four four. this is just a 3x3 three three. and what that does is it leaves us one space in the middle for a pattern provider which is the one thing that it needs. What we're going to do is we fill any gaps in the sides with heat vents. So we'll put some heat vents in, like so. Then we're going to want a pattern provider in there and our final heat vent. What that does, that's become a multi block now. If we look on there, we've got one page of slots available for patterns. If you look at mine across here, We've got four pages. That's because inside this, there's eight squares. Four of them have got pattern providers, like that one. And the other four have got crafting CPUs that just speed up the crafting. So this ain't got any crafting CPUs. It's going to be fine though. But 
we should be pulling quite a bit more power now so we're up to 21 um for a little network a little system one pattern provider is all you really need as you say as you as your patterns grow though i'm up to i'm onto, onto a third page of patterns so a little system that big won't be big enough for me but i've got all kind of stuff going on so what we do with that is blank patterns we need a couple of bit new bits of stuff that we haven't looked at so really quickly i'll just show you the different recipes we've used there we've used so the crafting cpu is what i didn't make that's one that just speeds up crafting heat vents iron bars and stuff they're just going the sides that's them bits and then containment wall gold and quartz crystal you have to make all the edges of a containment wall and then inside there we've got a pattern provider there that is crafting table a couple of converting matrices and some other bits all very straightforward what we've got now is ability to auto craft in our machine in our system we don't get anything in there though what we have to do is make a pattern and for that you need this other thing here i'm going to break it for a second and bring it with us let me in yeah Yep, my step assist was not helping there so me pattern encoder this is the other thing that doesn't have to be attached to the system like if you remember this thing the preformer doesn't need attaching to the system preformer don't need attaching and neither does this pattern encoder what we can do with this is we can create a pattern so for example if we wanted a pattern for if we want a pattern for a fairness like so that creates a fairness you put a blank pattern there encode do the recipe for blank patterns each one of them takes a quartz crystal so see i've got a couple of stacks of a quartz crystal in that thing over there what we've done was we've encoded a pattern there that's now got crafts one fairness with eight cobblestone we can click on that that can slot in there if you press shift while that's in there you can see what your, what your patterns actually are a picture of and now if we look at our terminal you can see as, long, as well as these things that we've stored in there we've also got that that says craft because we haven't got any of them stored in there we can click craft we can pick a number it'll begin it's crafted as one now because there's one in there it's showing you the number of it so if there's more than one it's have a number there but so it doesn't say craft when there's anything in unless you change it with this thing here you can just look at stored items craftable items we've only got one thing craftable that's all very good and then the only other thing we could possibly need and i should have made a fairness for it i've got i'll tell you what i'll use that fairness the thing we could possibly need is things that don't craft into other stuff so things that get processed into other stuff you need to do a little bit different for example glass is made from sand but that doesn't tell us that because it, it, it's not crafted into sand it's fairness into sand so if we get a bit of glass and i'll use a little bit of coal just to cook this up and a bit of glass so a bit of coal in there that was loud wasn't it strange um a bit of coal in there what we can do is we want it to craft glass for us out of sand so what we can do is we can put a bit of sand in there we know what it creates one bit of sand creates one bit of glass so we can do that and we can make a pattern there that doesn't make any sense if it's a crafting pattern so if we were to put that in there see it's got a red background that's because one sand isn't one glass isn't crafted with one sand but it is processed so what we can do is using an ME interface ME interface goes on the side of your machine that accepts inputs so the fairness is on the top and this thing can go in there so now we'd need an import bus to get things out of there and let's just connect this and make it right connect it to the system oops and we could also with this again we could use a level emitter to control how much glass is in the system so why the hell not let's do that so what i want to do is I want this to control that so I want that active revolt signal and we need to connect that back to there like so 
find on the bloody conveyor belt. And what we're going to put into this thing is we want to keep 10 glass in the system. Let's just use a bit, put some coal in there. So now, no, 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 that's not right at all. That's not right at all. You can't, that, that's not what we do with that level thing. Um, right. Uh, one second. Get me head wrong things. Yeah, we don't want that on there because it's a crafting pan. Ignore that little bit about the control. What we do now is, if we want some sand, now, if we want some glass, should I, say, should I say, we can go there, we can click that, we can begin. What that's going to do is going to send some sand in, into there for us because it knows that to get glass, it needs sand. We could do it with a level emitter if you was using a crafting pattern like in what can go into here. You could put, um, you could set this to always craft. So if there was something that always crafted into that. So if this was a crafted, if sand crafted into glass, you could have an export bus. You could put sand in there and you could move that to always craft items. And then it would always try and craft whatever it could, whenever it could. So you could use that, you could use a level emitter on that to control the amount of glass in there but because glass is just a, a, a fairness item you see that now we've got one glass in there because that's all we asked for let will take that out and see with the craft thing again so we can craft as much glass as we want there you go little auto crafting system that's the most basic of the auto crafting you could do i suppose making a bit of glass and making a fairness but i think that covers most stuff there is some more advanced stuff there is um you can make sub networks and use different color different color cable and stuff you can do some fancy stuff using level control with sub networks but that's all pretty advanced stuff this will get you going this is about as advanced as my system is um i'll run you through my system real quick it's got some nice control on the greg tech stuff here i've got it so that it puts in water cells in the bottom of my grinders and keeps them full and it doesn't just do that what it also does is it actually maintains a level of filled water cells in the system using this liquid transposer so this has got control there from the level emitter you see that it will always that turns on when there's when there's more than one water cell floating under the network so whenever the grinder uses a water cell it'll take the last water cell out of the network this will turn off that'll create me some more water cells using empty cells everything gets recycled back through the system I've got a similar thing that we just made upstairs there. I've got Ignis Extruder putting stone into the system, being controlled off a level emitter. And I've got, there's the one that's controlling the amount of sands in the system. And it's also putting gravel in the system just to buy products. Gravel's actually, and that's, that was a lie. It's not putting gravel into the system. It's taking the gravel, it's making it into flint. Gravel pulverised becomes flint. So that's pulverised into flint and that's putting that in the system. So there you see, little... little enclosed system that's doing pretty much everything and um, controls blast furnace it feeds into my implosion compressor using a couple of things from mfr called item routers there that just directs which things go into which side of the implosion compressor um all works very well i've got things going in out of routers there for my matter fabricator so i've got an import bus and export bus that one's set to import anything that drops dropped into that router and that one's set to export scrap into that adjacent inventory, which of course is a route that feeds the scrap into the matter fabricator. And as you can see, I've got multiple setups here. So I've got a compressor that takes straight up items. At the minute, all it's compressing is iridium oil into iridium ingots. I've also got an ME interface because all these things are crafted using a compressor if you will so to make a diamond we need a coal chunk so that's a crafting pattern rather than just a it's a, it's a manufacturing craft pattern rather than a thing that needs that needs a coal chunk put it into there you can't just make a coal chunk into a diamond in your inventory so that's why we've got a mixture of me interfaces and export buses so I think that pretty much covers a basic system that's everything you need to know anyway I'm pretty sure everything you need to know so make an expandable ME network with auto crafting and a bit of level control. 
So, there we go. I hope it was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope you join me next time. Cheers. Bye.